Hi, welcome back to Anything is Possible. I'm Tamara and I live at Lake Chapala, Jalisco, Mexico. This week I'm going to talk a little bit about Mexican customs I'm finding out in terms of Christmas and how they celebrate and I'm also going to go over a little bit of what I'm finding in terms of things on my shopping list that I'm having a hard time finding. And I, I don't mean this to sound like I'm complaining, it's just things that were surprises to me that it would be difficult to find. So first I wanted to say that in, in Mexico they really don't decorate very much. Um, you can drive down the street of this area anyway and not really know that Christmas is happening at all. I uh, went to the town of Chapala and drove up and down, walked up and down the streets and in my area um, which is San Antonio and Riberas there's virtually no decorations at all. Um, the stores are not flooded with Christmas decor or gift ideas or holiday music or any of that and the, the streets and um, central areas are not decorated um, to the hilt with tinsel and garlands and Christmas decorations. So this was really surprising to me being that it is a hugely Catholic area and very religious but that is what Christmas is. It, here is celebrated as a rather quiet, low-key religious holiday. It's virtually impossible to find fresh, live Christmas trees. It is possible to find artificial trees. There is a roadside stand near me and a, of course Walmart and other area uh, stores carry artificial trees. But uh, I haven't found, seen any actual live Christmas trees at all. No Christmas tree lots or anything like that. Um, there was one area where there's and a couple of stores where people have taken pieces of wood and crafted them into kind of stick Christmas trees that you can hang ornaments on if you want. Um, I'm pretty sure this is largely for the gringo population here. I'm not really seeing that um, Mexicans decorate much at all. When you go through a residential area and you see a house that has been decorated, you can almost be guaranteed that it is um, a gringo, a uh, European, U.S., Canadian person living at that house. So what I did was I went to my local vivero, um, or nursery, um, one that's right around the corner from me, and I bought a great big palm and put it in a nice pot and um, went around to some thrift stores and a friend of mine gave me some of her decorations. There were some used decorations in a thrift store. Most of them had nothing at all. Then I did actually break down and go to Walmart and buy a few Christmas balls and then at this uh, roadside stand my friend um, she picked me up some Christmas tree lights and I put those on the palm. So it's pretty festive and um, my cats seem to really enjoy the blinking lights and so far they haven't hit any of the Christmas balls off. But anyway, it, it is very fitting for this area to have a palm as a Christmas tree. <laughs> One of the things that's important in December, before I guess about the 16th, you need to tip anyone who's helping you with your home. So if you have a housekeeper or, and or a gardener, 
you need to uh, give them some sort of tip and a lot of times you give them a gift uh, food or something like that that they could use with their family one place I read online says oh it's you know it's easy you just go pick up a box of Christmas cards put some money in it and wish them well for Christmas and so that started me on quite a chase to try and find a box of Christmas cards and it turns out that Christmas cards aren't really done here either. I mean, especially seeing as how there is no postal service. I went to about six different papelerias in Chapala. Um, I have looked locally. I looked in an um, art supply store. And I even went to Soriana, um, this huge grocery store that has everything from underwear and groceries to washing machines and television sets. I mean, it's a gigantic store. Um, they had a lot of Christmas decorations, actually, at 50% off, but they had no Christmas cards at all. So um, I basically bought a couple of really nice um, cards that are paintings done by a local artist at the art supply store and I will just put the money in that. And you're supposed to also tip like you, anybody else that, that you have services from, like your garbage collector, um, your gas delivery person, if you have water delivery, um, tip them something also. It's actually required by law for businesses to tip their, um, or give bonuses to their employees, but, um, uh, if you, you just have somebody that you pay on a cash basis, on a casual basis, like we generally do with gardeners, um, it, it is just something that guarantees that they are happy and they will continue to give you good services throughout the year. It is just expected. Normally the minimum amount uh, for the tip is two times their normal pay. Four times is certainly uh, much more appreciated and generous. So what I'm doing, I actually have a gardener, but he doesn't do much of the work. He has an assistant that comes. So I decided, well, I really need to tip them both, um, even though I only pay the boss. Um, he's not the one that does the bulk of the work himself. So I decided I'm going to have to tip them both. And they spend maybe 15, 20 minutes here a week. And so I decided, uh, and I pay them um, 200 pesos or $10 a visit. So I decided that I would pay them each 800 pesos so, or $40. So that ends up being $80. And I thought, well, that's okay. You know, I mean, it's kind of more than I would like if I had one gardener that did the work and instead I have the boss and his son. But I can't, I can't make sure that the, that the actual worker is going to get the money if I pay the boss. So I'm going to pay them both. And I actually just went to a chocolate fair in Guadalajara and picked up some boxes of chocolates. So I'm going to give each of them a small box of these beautiful, absolutely beautiful gourmet chocolates. And if they don't want them, they can give them to their mother or their wife or their girlfriend or whatever they want to do, re-gift them. But it's a, a token of appreciation to what they do, showing up diligently every single week to keep my guard looking nice. So I took some time to wander around downtown Chapala and while I was there, just to kind of get a feel for what things look like um, here in December. And uh, like I say, there really was not much indication that it was Christmas time. Uh, some of the stores kind of had things put out in front, but not like with huge bows on them and no Christmas music blaring. Um, the actual downtown square where the gazebo is, they had a huge array of beautiful poinsettias, or what they call noche buenos here. Um, and it was very beautiful, but um, no big garlands, no Christmas music. 
no big bows or big balls hanging from the trees. Now, I don't know. I mean, even when I was in Guadalajara last week, I didn't see. One of the things that I'm really looking forward to is most of the little towns um, have what's called La Posada, and La Posada is a reenactment of Mary and Joseph walking through the towns trying to find a place to stay and for her to give birth to their baby. And um, it ends up at the Catholic church in town and then they have a mass and they usually have some kind of um, party with music and, and food and it's a celebration and I, I'm really hoping I'm going to be able to find one locally but so far I haven't even found any of the local churches have websites so I uh, have contacted a local news agency and said it would be nice if you had something on your website with a guide to where you could go and when and what time, what days uh, there was going to be a La Posada so that we could go and um, walk along and participate in and, and celebrate in the Mexican way. Of course there are celebrations here amongst all the gringos. Uh, I have a luncheon I'm going to with a bunch of other women uh, Christmas and then Christmas Day um, there's going to be uh, a group that gets together at a local restaurant and has a Christmas feast together for those of us that don't have family in this area. So um, there's always groups that are happy to have you join and, and uh, plenty of gringos in the Lake Chapala area that celebrate in, in our traditional way. So I wanted to show you this beautiful corn husk angel that I got. Um, she's handcrafted. Her hair is actually made from corn silk. And I just love underneath, it looks like petticoats. Those are just all corn husks, and it's all handmade by a lady that was at the local um, Tiangui. And um, I just fell in love with her. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about things that I, I've been kind of surprised uh, that I was having a hard time finding here. Um, I've had these things on my list for a while. And I, every time I go out shopping someplace, I keep my eyes open and see if I can find them. But so far, it's, I've been fairly unsuccessful. One of the things was um, ballpoint pens. You know, I just wanted to pick up a box of Bix somewhere. You know, I'm running low. I brought some pens down with me, and they're running out of ink. So I needed some pens just to write grocery lists with or whatever. Um, and also, I, I wanted some um, wide uh, felt tip, like Sharpies or something, just to indicate on some of my cardboard storage boxes, uh, you know, what's in the box in large letters. And um, I have been unable to find that. Um, and another thing, I'm, I'm a really huge fan of basmati rice, which is native to India. And... Um, I eat brown rice because it's just so much healthier. White rice has had all the nutrition basically stripped out of it, the germ and the bran and everything. So I eat brown rice, and if you've ever had basmati rice, you just know it is so wonderfully aromatic and delicious. It's nutty, yummy flavor, and it just fills the house with this wonderful aroma while you're cooking it. Uh, I can't find it. And so I've been looking in every possible grocery store here. And um, I actually did find white basmati, but, you know, I'd rather eat just plain brown regular rice than white basmati. It, it's um, just worthless in terms of nutrition. <laughs> so I, that's what I've been looking for. And I went on a quest. And, uh, you know, that was one of the reasons I went to the town of Chapala and just parked and walked up and down all the streets. And, um, like I say, when I was looking for Christmas cards, I went to every papeleria, uh, which are a paper store. But I was thought, well, for sure, they'd, they'd have pens. Well, no, they don't have pens, and none of them had Christmas cards. I actually came across this little store called Yo Bay. And it was quite a store. It was kind of like a five and dime, only 
there was some really inexpensive stuff imported from China and stuff, uh, you know, big balloons and how oh, cheap makeup, you know, like you'd find at the dollar store. And, and but I found ballpoint pens, and so I got a couple there. One I paid way more than I should have paid. It was four dollars um, for just a real average little fine point pen, um, and then another one was a dollar fifty three pesos. But I did actually find. Um, like Bix and, and wide felt tip markers on Amazon Mexico. So that is what I'm going to have to add to my cart because I have looked high and low and can't find them. But I, one of our local uh, gourmet grocery stores that really caters a lot to the gringos here, they try so hard to bring in things from the U.S. that people have demanded. And they had a Facebook post and um, some of the things people were missing. And uh, it's kind of amusing to me, some of these things. But other things, they, they seem kind of commonplace and things you might expect to find here. And um, they were unable to find them. So I imagine that the owner was able to, to pick those up and get them. But the thing that's kind of interesting is, you know, people ask for this stuff and then it comes into the store and really start complaining about the prices. But then you figure out, well, you know, they had to drive up there and drive back and pay the customs and pay, you know, probably retail price for a lot of this stuff to pick up a, you know, a dozen jars of this or that for people. I went in there and I just shopped and bought my usual brands the first time I went in and I found out I paid $35 US for a, a bottle of laundry detergent that I, you know, I didn't think anything about it until I came home and looked at the receipt and I said, well that is definitely going to change because I don't care that much about the brand. You know, I could find some other laundry detergent. So I never did find the wide uh, tip pans or the basmati rice. Um, I did find some basmati rice on Amazon, uh, the brown basmati, and it, it's not horribly expensive. It's certainly a whole lot more than what I paid for the regular brown rice that I bought. But, um, you know, I'll probably buy it. And Mercado Libre also had um, basmati, but it was more expensive. And I'll probably just go ahead and buy some and I keep it in the cupboard and have it every now and then just because I love it so much. <laughs>
find out and do it something a different way. So I just wanted to thank you for coming by. Wookie wanted to say hi to. <laughs> we went for a walk this morning. We did. Week. I hope you have a wonderful week this week. And come on back next time. And I will see you later. Bye.